Pastor Chooks, along with his wife, Pastor Toyin, are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg, South Africa. Through them, God is raising an army of ordinary men and women who are transforming and uplifting the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation and uplifting of the complete man, complete woman and wholesome families. Some of the events and programs include the Dream Achievers Seminars and Conferences, Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps, Limitless Men's Seminars, they are also the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women. They also host the annual Power of Women conferences and events. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27814210835. Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body he is the savior of the body therefore just as the church is subject to Christ so let wives be, be to their own husbands in everything husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the lord does the church for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church nevertheless let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband okay uh colossians chapter 3 verse 18 colossians 3 verse 18 i'll read there mm -hmm. wives submit to your own husband as is fitting in the lord as is fitting in the lord all right i read you scriptures that gives us the parameters of the whole concept of submission tonight we we came to talk about it <laughs> We came to talk about it. We, we, we started this conversation last week, Thursday. If you missed it, I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. You're going to find the record from last week, uh, Thursday, uh, and then just watch it. Today is a sequel to that. So we, we're dealing with the chapter in my book, Going Undercover, chapter 5 of the book, Going Undercover. It's about you know, submission. I know it's a word that a lot of women, especially people who are um, on the feminist you know movement side don't want to hear well the truth is that the bible said so and i will not remove what is in the bible for those who are christians who who are um, subscribed to the bible well god is right what he tells us is what we are going to do so we will um accept the bible and try and understand what the bible is saying about submission now first of all tonight let me start by saying this is not what submission is about okay so let's talk about what it is not then we're going to talk about what it is and in talking about what it is we are going to be able to unveil the beauty and 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 the truths around the subject of submission so what is it not submission is not subservience so it's not about the woman being inferior to the man where she has no mind of her own she doesn't you know have anything to contribute no 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 that's not what he's saying the woman is not inferior so submission is not inferiority mm -mm. it's not inferiority it's not being laid back it's not being docile it's not it's not you know uh it's not a 
a license for men to degrade women. No, 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 no. Brother, no. It's not weakness. Uh, submission is not given absolute authority to the man to do whatever he wants to do whenever he does an abuse. That's an abuse. It's not so. It's not supposed to be so. So, uh, uh, these are the things that submission is not. So, it's, it, it's not a call to be subservient. Um, it's not a call to be bullied. It's not a call to be uh, rough-handled. No, that's not what it is. No. That's it. What is it? Number one, submission is difference out of love. When you defer to someone out of your love for them. You know, when we read in verse 21 of chapter 5 of Ephesians, it says submit to one another. There is a mutual submission that is so beautiful to experience when there is genuine agape love between two people. It's, it's that place where you know that I don't know it all. You have a perspective that I don't have. Um, we, we need each other's perspective to arrive at a proper decision. So I submit to your ideas. You submit to my ideas. We are able to take our ideas and weigh it. And, you know, um, think about it, look at it properly from all perspectives, and then we arrive at an answer or a solution that makes the most of the two sides that we have brought, you know, to the table. That's what submission, biblical submission is supposed to be. It's mutual submission. So when the Bible says, wife, submit to your own husband, it's saying, defer to him in love. But I want you to notice that the man that you are supposed to submit to is the man who has laid down his life for you. As Christ laid down his life for the church. So it is that willingness in the, in the, on the side of the man to lay down his life for the woman that empowers the woman to submit to him. So because laying down your life for somebody is submission. Laying down your life for, to somebody is submission. You submit your life to them. You know, you, you remember when, when, when uh, uh, Pontius Pilate uh, was exactly or cross-examining Jesus, and he was saying, no, I have the power to release you. Jesus said, ah, stop it. <laughs> stop it. You don't have the power to, you can only have power over me because I submit, because I lay down my life. If I don't lay down, you can't have power to decide my fate. You don't have that kind of power. So, so you're having whatever authority and having whatever power you have because I laid down my life. That's submission. I submitted to death. So, so the man in laying down his life for his bride is actually submitting. He's saying, not my will, not what I want. Because when Christ laid down his life, he laid down his life for the benefit of the church. For the benefit of his bride, he actually laid down his life so that his bride can be saved. So, so it wasn't what he wanted. It was he was doing what he needed to do in the best interest of his bride. So when we talk about submission, the man does what is necessary for the best interest, for the best outcome of his bride. That's what it means to lay down your life. So, so you consider her first. You put her first and then you give up things. You give up resources, time, energy, your preference, your whatever you want. You give it up so that she can have it. So she can be benefited. Now, when there is that kind of love and sacrifice, then it's not difficult to see how the man can be loved and the woman can be loved. How the man can be respected and the woman can be upheld. Because, you know, it, it's mutual. Nobody is roughshodding the other. We differ to one another in love. And that's what biblical submission is about. It's what, that's what it is. So, so we, we need you to get it. Man, biblical submission is not a license to pound it and roughshod the woman. And woman, biblical submission 
is not saying that you're a fool. You don't have any say. No, 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 no. If you notice, submission can only effectively work biblically when the man has first laid his life down. When the man has shown that he is willing to push the interest of his wife first, foremost, then it's easy for the woman to actually go with him, to differ with him. I mean, how, I mean, think about it. Someone has laid down their life for you. Someone has given you everything that they have. Someone had inconvenienced themselves. Someone has sacrificed their, their comfort, their preference for you. It's so easy then for you to what? Follow whatever he says or agree with him. Or because a man who is willing to lay down his life will be willing to hear what his wife has to say. She, he'll be willing to receive, you know, her counsel, receive her contribution, her perspective on issues, and so on and so forth. So, so you can see that the relationship is a, is a mutual one. Okay. So, it, 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 it's, it's about the man being a servant leader. It's about the man being a servant leader. I want to read something for you from the book of John, chapter 13. John 13... Okay, John 13, 14 to 16. John 13. John 13, 14 to 16. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Now, the master left an example. The master left a very powerful example of servant leadership. He washed the feet of his disciples and said, you need to do this for one another. You ought to wash one another's feet. So in marriage, submission is about washing one another's feet. The wife washes the feet of the husband, which is a, is, a, is a symbol of service. The wife washes the feet of his, I mean, the husband washes the feet of his wife. So it's mutual service. It's serving one another. It's upholding one another. It's making sure that the other person is okay. Can I tell you something? Submission is a problem where there is selfishness. Submission is a problem where there is selfishness. See, self-sacrifice is the antidote for selfishness. So the man demonstrates that in leadership, in headship, by self-sacrifice. And when he has done that, then it's easy for the woman also now to self-sacrifice because he takes sacrifice for her to submit. So, so eh, both husband and wife are operating in debt to self. The man dies to self to lay down his life, to lay down his preferences, to lay down his convenience. The woman dies to self to submit to what the man has laid down. So there is a mutual washing of feet. And Jesus said, I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So what he said here, he said to the wife. What he said here, he said to the husband. Because this word are to both the wife and the husband. So, we wash one another's feet. We serve one another. That's what it is in marriage. We serve one another. That's the beauty of biblical submission. The man serves the woman. The woman serves the man. And they both look out for each other. And they both look out for the purpose of God for the relationship. You know, you know when people know what God desires for their relationship, for their home, for their marriage, and both are committed to accomplishing it, then, you know, then it's easy. See, because you cannot accomplish anything that God desires without laying down your life. Jesus says, you need to take up your cross and follow me. If you are going to follow God's agenda, there is the element of death to self. You cannot be alive to yourself and still be able to fulfill the purpose of God. It's not possible. It's not possible. You can only be... Pop um, um, you can only... Uh, fulfill the purposes of God by dying to self. So that applies to the man, that applies to the woman. It, because we are all, we are both, uh, you know, followers of Jesus Christ. So I, I die to self 
in order to pursue God's purpose for the family. For, for me to pursue God's purpose for my wife, I need to die to self. Let me say it again. For my wife to pursue God's purpose for me and steward it and protect it and make sure that she, you know it's delivered, she has to die to self. So where we are struggling with this submission thing is where there is so much selfishness, nobody is willing to die to self. It's about me. It's about what I want. You got to give me what I want. Uh, you know, and wherever that is, can I tell you something? Selfishness is the greatest curse of a marriage. Where there is selfishness, it is, the, and the devil loves it. The devil loves it where there is selfishness. Because he will have his way. He will inflict pain. He will inflict injury. He will do all kinds of nonsense. See, the call to submission is the call to die to self. And people don't want to die to self. People don't want to die to self. People just want to, but you can't really follow Jesus without dying to self. You can't. Jesus said this, if any man will follow me, let him what? Take up his cross. Deny himself. Deny himself. You can't follow Jesus without denying yourself. You can't. You can't. It's not possible. Following Jesus requires dying to self. And that's the only way you can, you know, truly fulfill God's agenda for your life, for your marriage, for your home. All right. Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20 verse 26. Uh, let me show you one more thing there. Matthew 20. 26. Matthew 20, 26. So can you see the beauty of submission? When both of us are willing to take our cross and fulfill the purposes of God for one another. Let me, let me put it in another way. Husband, you marry that woman so that you can serve the purposes of God for that woman. Wife, you marry that man so that you can serve the purposes of God for that man. Not for your own interest. Not for what you want. No, you are not in the marriage for what you want. You are in the marriage to serve the other person. So if you are not ready to serve somebody, then don't marry them. It's not for them to serve you. No, no, no. You got into the marriage for you to serve the purposes of God for the other person. That's what it is. And the moment we understand this, then it's easy to wash feet. It's easy to submit. It's easy to sacrifice. It's easy to... Because it's not about you. You came there to help the other person become a better follower of Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you a question. What are you doing to help your wife become a better follower of Jesus? If you keep pounding her head and keep roughshodding her and keep maltreating her, how are you helping her become a better follower of Jesus? Wife, how are you helping your husband become a better follower of Jesus? That's what you came into the marriage for. You came into the marriage to help them become better followers of Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's let's read that scripture in uh, Genesis. Uh, sorry, Matthew chapter twenty. Matthew chapter twenty, verse twenty-six. Matthew twenty, twenty-six. All right. He says, "Yet it shall not be so among you." Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So, Jesus is teaching us. This is so beautiful. If you want to achieve great things in your marriage, the key is to serve. Greatness in the kingdom, whether it's in the marriage or any part of our kingdom, greatness in our kingdom is the byproduct of serving. Greatness is the byproduct. Of, so great marriage is by serving. Serve your spouse and then you have a great marriage. Let me say it again. Serve your spouse and you have a great marriage. Serve their needs. Serve them serve the purposes of God for their life and you have a great marriage. Devote yourself to serve your spouse. Think about, ask yourself the question. Well, uh, you know, how much have you served? And, 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 and the scripture here says, he says, whoever deserves to be first among you, let him be your slave. 
Slave, 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 slave. Do you know how horrible it is to be a slave? A slave is a slave. A servant is even better than a slave. A slave is a slave. A slave actually has very little rights. Thank God that slavery has been abolished in our modern society. You know, anywhere slavery is found right now is illegal. Slavery is, is abolished. Because, you know, but the Bible says you must be prepared to be the slave. So imagine where husband and wife come with the mindset, I am your slave. I am voluntary. It's voluntary. I'm a voluntary slave to serve you. And the wife is voluntary as a slave. The husband is voluntary. Oh my goodness. We serve each other and help each other become what God wants us to be. This is the picture. This is the picture. See, I, you know, part of the problem is where in our modern society, how we um, view, you know, the, the, the word helper. You know, the woman is called the helper in the book of Genesis. And in our modern society, when someone is said to be a helper, they are seen to be an inferior position. So the surgeon's helper is inferior to the surgeon. You see? The... the uh, the CEO's helper is inferior to the CEO. So, so we carry that mindset and superimpose it on the Bible. But when the Bible said helper in the book of Genesis, the word helper, there is the same word that is used for us. You know, God is my helper. God is not inferior to you. God is my helper. God is, the Holy Spirit is my helper. That is the same sense. So the wife is that kind of helper to our husband, not an inferior one, but one who brings in support, one who brings in, you know, um, um, strength, the one who comes to uphold and uplift. That's what that helper is. So, so it's not an inferior position, and this is where it comes from. Where people begin to think, "Oh, I am, inf I'm superior to the woman. The woman, the woman is inferior to the man." Nothing can be further from the truth, because remember that when God created male and female. He created them equal in the beginning. So if it was equal in the beginning, it cannot be otherwise in the mind of God that the woman has become inferior. No. The woman is equal to the man. They're just two different sides of God. You know, the Bible talks about the, 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 the man is made in the image of God. So the woman is the female image of God. Male, man is the male image of God. So the female image of God is not different. You know, you know often people ask the question, you know, is God male or female? No, God is both. God is both. He's both male and female. I know that in the Bible, the male uh, uh, um, gender is used to describe God, but God is not male alone. God is male and female because there's a female side to him and there's a male side to him. The Bible calls God the El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. God has breasts, multi-breasted. El Shaddai, that's what it means, the multi-breasted one. So, so God has breasts, just like the woman has breast and God feeds his own. Okay? So God is male and female. So the female image of God is not inferior. So the female image of God helps, supports, uplifts the male image. And when we get into a relationship with that mindset, the man is able to draw all the help, all the assistance, all the upliftment, all the encouragement, all the support that he can from the woman. And the woman is able to you know, submit, as it were, defer in love to the man. And they both can work the purposes of God and, and make things happen. Let me, let me begin to round this up. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Woman, what the Holy Spirit is to the believer is what you are to your husband. You are a comforter. That's why it's an abuse for you to become a nagger. You're supposed to be a comforter. You're supposed to be a counselor. You're supposed to be a helper. You're supposed to be a, an advocate. Everything that the Holy Spirit is to the believer is what the wife is to the husband. And if, you, if a woman can meditate on that and, and really see the beauty, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, what can we do without the Holy Spirit? Nothing. Nothing. Strength, grace, Wisdom all come from the Holy Spirit. There's nothing we can do without the Holy Spirit. And, and when the woman 
respects her husband. The, the text we read in Galatians chapter 5 ends with say, let her see to it that she respects her husband. When she respects her husband, her husband is able to draw from her ministry. Her husband is able to draw from the help that she, she, she brings, the support that she brings, the upliftment that she brings. And both of them are able to, you know, get to where God wants them to get to. Let me read my last, my last uh, reference for tonight. My time is really finished. Psalm 10, Psalm 7 verse 10 rather, sorry. Psalm 7 verse 10. Psalm 7 verse 10. It says, my defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. My defense is, God defends the vulnerable. So, God defends the vulnerable. That's the nature of God, that he protects and defends the vulnerable. If the woman is supposed to be subservient, then how is God, you know, just in, 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 in the way he has arranged it? So it definitely is not God's uh, uh, plan for the woman to subserv subservient. God protects, defends. So he can never put the woman in a, a precarious situation or position to be battered and to be, no, no. We, I want you to get it. God is for the male as he is for the female. And we are all supposed to come into the marriage institution with, with humility to serve, with humility to um, respect and honor one another and make sure that we pursue the purposes of God for the union, the purposes of God for each of our lives. This is where, where you know, before you marry somebody, one of the things you need to find out or seek to find out is what is God's purpose for this person? Because I came to serve it. What is God's purpose for my husband? Where, where is God taking him to? What does God want to do his li with his life? What are his giftings? What are his anointings? What are his assignments? What are the peculiarities of, of the call, configuration of God's call on his life? I came to serve it. I came to enable it. I came to help it. I came to facilitate it. Not to be an obstacle. Not to be an opposition. Not to become a problem. Then the man asked the question, I am taking this woman to be my wife. What is God's purpose for her life? Where is she going to? What God does God want to do with her? Then the man starts serving that purpose. The man starts feeding into that purpose. Can you imagine a, a relationship where the man is serving the purpose of God for the woman, the woman is serving the purpose of God for the man? Both will be fulfilled. Especially if both are serving the purpose of God, are committed to the purpose of God for their lives. Because if I'm serving the purpose of God for your life and you're not you know, interested, I'm going to be frustrated. I'm trying to push you in a direction that you're not willing to go. I'm going to be frustrated. But if I am serving the purpose of God for you and you are pursuing the same purpose, we are walking in the same direction. We are going to do well. We are going to enjoy what we're doing because we are moving in the same direction. Well, I want to encourage everybody there. If you're a man listening to me tonight, please understand that God wants you to lay down your life for your wife. If a woman listening to me today, please understand it. God wants you to support your husband as the Holy Spirit supports a believer. And once we understand and respect this, we bring out the beauty and the truth of biblical submission. I'll end tonight by saying, submit to one another. As the Bible says in Galatians, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, submit to one another in the fear of God. In the fear of God. If you fear God, you will submit to your wife. If you fear God, you will submit to your husband. In the fear of God. It's because people don't fear God. That's why they do crazy things. If you fear God, you won't, do, you won't maltreat the other person. You won't abuse them. You won't take advantage of them. You won't be rude. You won't be, you know. <laughs> the Bible says love is never rude. So when people are rude, they are not operating in love. The Bible says love you know, uh, conquers, uh, uh, a multi, uh, covers a multitude of offenses. So, so, this is what God has called us to do, and we will do it. I want to pray for you tonight that your marriage will become richer, that your relationship will become healthier. As you learn to submit and die to flesh, and submit to the purposes and counsel of God, 
uh, will see the life of God begin to flow into that marriage and flow into that relationship. As you begin to kill selfishness and bury selfishness and, and, and deny selfishness the front seat and allow self-sacrifice the front seat, good things will start happening in your marriage. All right, we're going to go to the, the last part of our time together where we're going to give the prize to... to There is an old age saying, happy wife, happy life, that most of us have heard at least once that suggests that in order for the home to be balanced and stable or the marriage to thrive, the wife has to be happy. The question to ask is, what does it mean to be a happy wife? Does it seem rare to hear about a happy wife, a woman content and satisfied in her marriage? Are there any secrets to know how to make your household happy? The For Wives Only seminars, facilitated by Pastor Chooks and Toyin Ogoye, are seminars that seek to teach wives the secrets and weapons to use to achieve a happy and fulfilling marriage, whether you are newly married or have been married for a while. These seminars are always insightful and beneficial to all wives. The format of these seminars are two powerful teaching sessions by Pastor Chooks Ogoye which have intermittent breaks, then a question and answer segment, which wives get to have their questions answered, then of course, prayers for marriages. There are opportunities to schedule for marriage counseling with the pastors. The sessions are highly interactive as wives get to hear and learn from each other's journeys. Who is the seminar for? The seminar is for all married women as well as engaged soon to be married ladies. Women who have a great and wonderful marriage, who are desirous of making it even better, are encouraged to attend. Women who are enduring their marriage and wanting out are highly encouraged to attend, to find answers and tools to help them turn things around in their homes. Even single women who want to start preparing for life in marriage are most welcome to attend as well. Pastor Chooks and Toyin Ogoye are the lead pastors at Resurrection Life Church Johannesburg where they place a strong emphasis on family and relationships. Their expertise on relationships has helped hundreds of singles and couples over the years build strong and lasting relationships and or fixing broken ones through their Singles Ignition Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camp, Marriage Seminars, Workshops and Conferences. They are the founders of the Power of Woman Academy and the conveners of the annual Power of Woman Conference. Pastor Chooks is the author of the best-selling book, The Amazing Power of Woman. Pastor Chooks and Toyin have been married for over 20 years, and it is their many years of experience in building their own marriage and in third-party marriage interventions that has equipped them with vital wisdom that they put together in these events. <laughs> 